So now, before we move to the next session, a few housekeeping points. As you'll have seen, we're using the Hopin platform for this event. This enables you to ask questions to our speakers. And to do this, please use the chat box. Some of you have already been doing that on the right-hand side of your screen. And please make sure you're here in what's called the stage section of the platform when you write your questions. We'll get to your questions at various Q&A moments during this morning. So please feel free to submit your questions at any time from now on. And to answer a, a question that some of you have already been posing, yesterday's event is being recorded. A link to the web stream will be available on the European Innovation Council and SME's Executive Agency's call website after the event. Just so it's clear, your cameras and microphones will be off for this morning's sessions. As I was saying, you'll be able to communicate with us via the chat function. Your cameras and microphones will, of course, then be on for this afternoon's networking sessions as you choose. Please also remember to fill in those all important profiles if you haven't done so already, as mentioned in the reception area when you checked in this morning. The more detail you enter, the better the matches will be as you network with colleagues with whom you might like to partner. Should you have any questions after today's event, you can email those questions to the organisers. The email address will appear on the screen at lunchtime and in the chat box, as will a link to a frequently asked questions page where you will find the answers to your questions and those posed by other colleagues and participants. So now we're going to move to the next session of today's event, which is called what Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs is and how it works. So we have three speakers this morning who will look at different aspects of the program. After each presentation, the speakers will answer your questions, which, as I just mentioned, you can post at any time during the presentation. So do make sure you use this unique opportunity to put your questions as you think of them, pop them in the chat box, and we'll get round to them as we can. So the first presentation is called Objectives, Program Background and How the Program Works. Our first speaker is the Program Manager for the Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs Program, Katarina Niedlova. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today with you at the Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs Info Day to the next call. My name is Katarina Niedlova. And I'm coming from Director General for Internal Market, Industry, Entrepreneurship and SMEs at the European Commission, uh, which is the Director General uh, behind this wonderful program. Uh, my aim today is to explain to you what is Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs. Okay, let's go into it. Uh, Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs has been uh, started in 2009. Uh, and it is an EU-funded exchange program for entrepreneurs. And currently this program uh, is operational in 40 countries all over Europe. By this program, we offer uh, one to six month exchanges to entrepreneurs, to new entrepreneurs who can go on exchange, gain knowledge, business ideas and contacts by, while working with experienced entrepreneurs. How does this program work? It is very, very simple concept uh, and has five steps. The first step is online application. The second step is a matching process. Third important step is contracting and preparing of the exchange, which is of course followed by the actual exchange stay abroad. And as a five step, we have uh, feedback and final payment to a new entrepreneur going on, on exchange. Now I will go a bit more into detail into each step. So the first step, online application. This is uh, when entrepreneurs are uh, deciding whether to take part in the program or not. Uh, on one hand side, we have new entrepreneurs somebody who is willing to start a business or who already started a business less than three years ago. In order for him to apply, he needs to have prepared a business plan, a document which will actually give us an idea what, he, what kind of business he wants to start. He needs to have updated CV and of course we need 
motivation. He will also need to tell us what are his uh, fields of interest in which he would like to collaborate. Important to say, applications are online. There are no deadlines. So anybody who decides to apply uh, at midnight can do so. No deadlines uh, for application. On the other hand side, we have host entrepreneurs, established entrepreneurs for uh, not less than three years who are interested to participate and exchange with new entrepreneur. They, for an application, need their CV, updated CV, and also motivation. They need to tell us why they want to take part in this program. While they are filling in the application, they will also have to select uh, an organization, which we call intermediary organization, which will help them uh, to in the process of uh, finding their ideal match. Once this is done, the application is sent to the intermediary organization for initial eligibility check. Uh, once the intermediary organization approves the applications, the entrepreneurs get access to a huge number of profiles of entrepreneurs where they can choose, start looking for their ideal match. We have different ways how uh, entrepreneurs, two entrepreneurs can find each, find each other. So the first one is, as I said, uh, the entrepreneurs can themselves go into the uh, online catalog and look for an ideal match according to a country of interest, field of, of uh, entrepreneurs, uh, other uh, knowledge of languages, availability uh, for a match. The tool itself also has an option and is offering uh, to entrepreneurs automatically matching, is giving matching proposals to entrepreneurs. Uh, and I can say that currently above about 10% of the matches uh, within the program are being created or proposed by the, uh, by, the, by the system. We have, of course, the intermediate organization, which I have mentioned uh, a while ago, and I will further mention uh, their task in the program, uh, who are also there to help entrepreneurs to find their ideal match. Fourth option, of course, might be also that entrepreneurs already met before, uh, but didn't have business uh, uh, collaboration before, and they actually subscribe to the program on the basis of their initial uh, meeting outside of the database. So once um, this initial matching is done, the two entrepreneurs talk to each other and agree that they would like to go and exchange and, and collaborate for a certain, certain period of time together. We can go to the next step. The next step is very important for the success of the exchange. The next step is contracting and preparation. The two entrepreneurs need to talk to each other and uh, prepare um, basically a description of what they will be doing. They need to negotiate the duration of the exchange, the objective of the stay and the content. What will be there? learning uh, results here i need to mention this is not a training ship this is a collaboration between two entrepreneurs on the same level uh, once this is done there is a contracting which is done between the intermediary organization and the new entrepreneur who will go in exchange within the contract you will learn about his uh, obligations but also rights. He will also learn about what will be his financial contribution from the EU to his uh, stay abroad. Next step is a stay abroad. As already mentioned, within the I program, entrepreneurs can go for an exchange between one to six months. It is on the job training and I cannot stress more. It is peer to peer training working on a concrete project. It is not that the new entrepreneur works for the host entrepreneur in his company. Uh, there is, during the exchange, on-site support, which is uh, provided uh, to new but also host entrepreneur by the intermediary organization of the host entrepreneur. 
During the exchange, the new entrepreneur, but also the host, will be asked to report about the exchange. It might be once a month, it might be also once during the exchange, but basically the intermediary organizations are uh, need to make sure that everything goes fine and the exchange is running well for both parties. Last but not least is the final step. We ask each entrepreneur at the end of the exchange for a feedback. So feedback is again online. Uh, new entrepreneurs feedback is linked to his last payment uh, from the European Commission. Host entrepreneur uh, needs to also fill his feedback in order for him to be able to participate in the program again. So this is important to say new entrepreneurs can participate in the program only for once while host entrepreneurs, if they find it imp important, uh, valuable for their uh, enterprises, they can decide to participate more. And of course, I can confirm that we do have quite a few host entrepreneurs who decide to host more new entrepreneurs. In this slide, I have listed uh, the European Commission contribution towards the new entrepreneurs. So as I mentioned, the new entrepreneurs going on exchange abroad for one to six months are supported financially by the European Commission. These are the lump sums per month. So for uh, to better understand, so if I have an entrepreneur who goes from France to Sweden, he will be entitled to 950 euros per month because he goes to Sweden uh, of his exchange. I need to stress here, this is not money we pay for his work with the host entrepreneur. This is a lump sum which should help the new entrepreneur, which should support the new entrepreneur and cover the extra cost linked to his travel and stay abroad. Here, I would like to stress one thing, and that is that we have also thought about entrepreneurs with special needs and entrepreneurs from far away, outermost regions of the European Union or overseas territories, those are entitled uh, to 1,100 euro um, without uh, looking at to which country they are actually traveling for their exchange. We of course do ask entrepreneurs for feedback because we need to know that the scheme is valuable that it has impact and uh, there is a reason to keep this program i said all of the entrepreneurs fill in the feedback questionnaire here you see what the entrepreneurs tell us what they like about this program and what they gain with the new entrepreneur we have mentioned a few things already maybe it's a bit more clear of course they get co-finance from the european commission they get experience and advice from an established entrepreneur, they develop international contact, uh, learn about foreign markets and find or may become provider or clients or uh, they, they, they can uh, start a co-venturing uh, company. On the other hand side, host entrepreneurs are participating in the program. They are not uh, any uh, subsidized by the European Commission and they still find interest in the program. So what is there for them? What we very often hear is that they actually get access to new skills and innovative knowledge. Uh, they tell us we run our business for several years, but we never have time to stop and think about doing what we do differently. And here we have somebody who is coming with fresh eyes fresh ideas, new skills to our company and helps us to innovate. So this is what they are uh, very happy about the host entrepreneurs. Of course, another uh, thing they say is important for them is they can intelligence about foreign markets um, and establish new partnership uh, with other entrepreneurs from other countries. On this slide, you'll see a bit more the institutional framework for this program. As I mentioned, European Commission is responsible for definition of strategic and a financial framework of the program. We make sure that it is in line with the European Union uh, policies and that the program receives enough money to run. 
um, the ground management of this program is uh, assured by the ASME agency, uh, which is uh, an EU body as well. Uh, we also, the program also benefits from uh, support of support office. So we have a body which is responsible for day-to-day -day operational management of the program. They are available for to answer questions from entrepreneurs. They are available. They have a help desk for entrepreneurs. They have a help desk for intermediate organizations as well. So they are there to help uh, with the day-to-day -day management. Next body, uh, very important on the ground already is the, are the intermediate organization and actually this call which we are now promoting and we run the info day for is to select new set new network of intermediate organizations so intermediary organizations are local and national business support organizations active in business support it may be different organization, uh, but they need to be active in business support. They can be Chamber of Commerce, regional development agencies, uh, business, uh, university business uh, links. That's that's people on the ground who know, who have access to our target group, to our new and host entrepreneurs, who can help them suggest, uh, look for partners who understand their needs when starting running or growing their business. Um, their tasks are recruitment and assessment of entrepreneur profile. It's a proactive uh, search for matches. It's support to entrepreneurs before they go exchange and while they are on exchange and also after the exchange uh, for the, to, to prepare a feedback from the exchange. And they are also responsible to promote the program on local level. From our side, they are co-financed uh, and uh, they are really backbone of implementation of the program. Of course, then the last uh, body in this circuit are the entrepreneurs who participate in the program. how intermediary organizations are selected. So this whole call, um, the info day for this call is about how we select the new network of intermediary organization. This is a general information uh, on general, uh, how we select the organization, what is, what is the concept behind. So there is always an open call for proposals, which is being managed by the ASMA agency. Uh, we have, what we are requiring is uh, uh, that applications are coming from consortia of independent legal entities. So it cannot be an individual legal entity. It has to be always consortia. And they, the consortia has to be created of uh, legal entities from different participating countries. The numbers, in the consortia and the, the ratio of countries does change in every call. So you need to have a look specifically in the call, in this call to, to, to see what is required. What we offer, uh, we co-finance those organizations, those consortia, intermediate organization. And uh, how do we co-finance them? We pay up to 100% of the money paid to new entrepreneurs. So the uh, support paid to entrepreneurs, to third parties. And we co-finance by maximum 75% management costs. For that, we ask them to promote the program, to be active with matches, uh, to assess the uh, applications. But in general, we ask for a number of successful matches being concluded. So, so the, the aim, the KPI will be a number of successful matches. For example, also in this call, there, call, there is an extra, uh, there are extra requirements. One of them is also that a certain percentage of the exchanges, successful exchanges uh, done by the intermediary organization has to come from countries with entrepreneurs from underrepresented countries. What are our key numbers, key achievements? 
I have already mentioned the program started in 2009, and you can see that during the year we have done 54 matches only, which gradually, steadily, the number has been growing. In 2021, we have reached 10,000 exchanges, which means involving 20,000 entrepreneurs in exchanges. Um, at the moment, um, we are around 10,000. 400 matches and we of course hope to reach very soon 11,000. Oh, sorry. I have already mentioned that we look at the feedback uh, of entrepreneurs. We have done survey and uh, this is what we hear from the entrepreneurs. This is what impact what is the impact of the program on entrepreneurs? We have uh, been interested in, for example, how much the I program can be a launchpad to creating new businesses. And from the feedback we have got is that 36, over 36% 36 of would-be entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs who participated in the program have actually started a company after the exchange. So this is extremely good result. Um, we also see that our participants, new entrepreneurs, 15% of them considers this program as solution to unemployment, which is also a uh, very good result. What do the host entrepreneurs tell us? What is the impact on them here? We see that 60% tell us that they have actually gained new ideas and techniques for their business. And 65 even claim that they have extended their operations to other markets thanks to their participation in this program. So this, this, this is very positive and very encouraging uh, feedback and impact we get. Um, here we, oh, sorry again. So what, what can we conclude? What does this program, how beneficial is this program? We see it actually addresses European challenges, which is definitely youth unemployment. It does deliver a tangible entrepreneurial education and it showcases the role models, entrepreneurs. It is, it is worth to be an entrepreneur. It is a good model. Um, it offers practical support to SMEs and it also strengthens the single market uh, connections. We also see that the feedback we get from new and host entrepreneurs is excellent. And I have already mentioned before, we see a transfer of knowledge, ideas, innovation, networking, uh, companies become more resilient thanks to cooperation and collaboration. We are convinced that it is, we have successful proof of the concept, it works. And uh, I already mentioned also the number of exchanges being done so far is very um, good and, and we are very happy about it. What are our challenges in the future? Of course, uh, we need to be uh, clear, COVID-19 travel restrictions have hit the program hard. Uh, so our challenge is to grow the program, keep it, get it back to its, its, its speed in the recovery phase after the COVID. Um, we also would like to increase participation of entrepreneurs and intermediary organizations from new or underrepresented countries. And uh, we also have to look further into synergies with the other European Union small and medium-sized enterprises support programs. Uh, we can talk about Enterprise Europe Network or clusters. We are sure that there are mutual benefits from cooperating uh, together. So this is, this is something which we want to work hard on. Last but not least, uh, we want this program to grow, and this is not only in numbers, but it is also in destination, uh, in geographic extension. 
And there we have been in the past few years quite successful. We have been able to receive an extra finances to pilot possibility of new entrepreneurs, European new entrepreneurs to go on exchange to outside European destinations. In next slide, I have a bit more information on that. Uh, the iGlobal has started in 2018 uh, and has been extended by a, a new three-year uh, preparatory action in 2021. As I mentioned, uh, it is uh, there in order to allow for new entrepreneurs, uh, citizens of EU, to go on exchange outside of Europe. Here it's only for up to three months. And the current destinations that are available for entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs, are Canada, Israel, United States, Singapore, South Korea, and Taiwan. The concept is very similar, just more details are different. So the financial support to new entrepreneurs is a bit different, uh, or, or each country has its own um, allocation, of course. But in case of iGlobal, we also contribute to travel because the travel is also a big chunk of money. So in order to help new entrepreneurs also to be able to go uh, outside of Europe, we also support them financially with travel. Uh, 600 for Israel, 800 uh, for other destinations, and then monthly allowance is uh, between 1,000 and 700 euros. This was as far as what the Erasmus for Young Entrepreneur program is. I would like to thank you for your attention. More information can be, of course, find, found on our websites or social media. And I rest available for any additional questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Katarina, for that really informative uh, presentation.